Hello everyone, this is Rob McDougall with Zank Financial here with your weekly economic update. Today is Monday, November 20th. So let's recap what happened last week. Very eventful week. Investors with intense focus on inflation and interest rates. Turned out to be a great week in terms of economic data that was released as uh, the information was favorable on both inflation and a slowing economic environment suggesting inflation may continue to come down, allowing the Federal Reserve to not raise interest rates further. So CPI last week was released. I uh, have to admit, last week we discussed this in a preview. I thought there was a potential for CPI to come in higher than expectations. The reverse happened. It actually came in lower than expectations. So on Tuesday, it came in a month over a month increase of 0.1%. Uh, or that was the expectation, 0.1%, it actually came in flat, 0.0. We thought possibly positive 0.2. Uh, the reason uh, for the 0.00 really was energy costs down more than expected. Energy costs down 5% year over year. And another favorable data point happened to be used cars. Now, you may recall two years ago, CPI increasing up to double digit, almost double digit level, um, used car and new car prices, but mostly used car prices were a huge contributor to the increased inflation. That actually came in down last week. The, the release came in down 7% year over year. Now, those two factors, lower energy costs, used car prices low, lower, um, were partially offset by shelter. So that's both rent and rental equivalents for homeowners. That came in another positive three, uh, nearly 4%. So that has continued to increase, but again, that was offset, more than offset by the energy price decrease and for used cars. So CPI came in 0.0 uh, versus an expectation of 0.1. And then core CPI, also came in better than expected, was expected to be up 0.3% month over month, came in at 0.2, so that was great. Uh, then the next day we had retail sales and PPI. So retail sales and investors are looking for some slowing in the US economy, not negative, not recessionary territory, but decreased growth. So in the third quarter, as we reported and discussed, GDP growth in the US was up 4.9%. That's not good, not sustainable, at those levels, it's simply going to push inflation higher. So uh, investors are looking for some indication that the economy is slowed without going into recession. So the retail sales number came in much more favorable than expected. Um, the, the retail sales numbers were up significantly in September, and they came in lower than expected in October. In fact, they were expected to be slightly negative, negative 0.1 month over month. It came in negative 0.3. Then if you strip on autos, retail sales uh, was expected to come in at negative 0.1, but that actually came in at 0.1. But the takeaway from this is on the retail sales side, slower than expected, bigger decrease than expected. So good for the theory of a uh, soft landing or slowing economy that doesn't end up in recession. Same day, we had PPI, Purchasing Price Index, and Producers Price Index, which also came in better than expected. So that was expected, the PPI was expected to come in a positive 0.1% month over month. It came in at a negative 0.5%. And core PPI was supposed to come in at 0.3% month over month, came in flat. So again, from an inflation standpoint, both CPI and PPI very much moving in the right direction to allow the Federal Reserve not to increase rates further and ultimately cut rates at some point. Uh, last two data points happened to be last Friday, housing starts, building permits. Won't hit you with the numbers, but bottom line is both came in lower than expectations. So again, some level of reduced economic activity is very much welcomed by investors. So the fact that housing starts, building permits were lower than expected, a good thing. So in total, where are we at with the Federal Reserve? Uh, the Federal Reserve has another FOMC, Federal Open Market Committee meeting, December 13th. The expectations for an increase, vanish, gone. Uh, virtually no chance whatsoever, 0.2% in terms of the futures. So pretty clear the Fed's not going to do anything in December. 
And it's increasingly being built into the markets that not only are they not going to increase, but we can start to study, we we can expect to see some cuts in interest rates next year. Uh, the Fed's fund future market has more than 50% odds of the first cut coming in March of next year. Uh, in terms of economic activity, mention the fact that it would be welcome to see some level of positive economic activity, but well below the 4.9% GDP in third quarter. So we look at the, the Atlanta Federal Reserve, see what they have to say. They took down their expectation for the fourth quarter GDP growth, not by much, but it's at 2.0%. 2.0%, that is sort of Goldilocks. We had 2.2%, 2.4% in the first and second quarter this year, and then the big spike in the third quarter. So if we hit 2% GDP growth in the fourth quarter, I think investors would respond very favorably to that. Uh, now, inflation expectations, we had mentioned that they had been pretty static really since March. They spiked up a little bit just three weeks ago, but now they've been coming back down. So now the expectation is 10-year inflation average, next 10 years, positive 2.28%. So it dropped last week and it's been dropping for the last three weeks. So again, inflation expectations definitely coming down. So uh, what does all I mean? Last week, uh, good inflation numbers, lower economic activity numbers. How did the markets respond? Extremely favorable. Both equity, fixed income, international, domestic, all up. So it was a great week almost across the board. Here in the U.S., U.S. equities up last week. And here's a good thing about it is we saw some increased breadth in terms of the increase. On a year-to-date basis, for the most part, uh, it's been the magnificent seven. You've probably heard about the seven mega cap stocks that have led the market this year. We've been hoping to see some of that broaden out to other areas of the market, but uh, particularly small cap and the value. And we started to see that last week. So big up week for the S&P 500, up 2.3%, third week in a row, up big. But within that, you look at, we take a look at the equally weighted S&P 500, Invesco's um, 500, uh, 500 equally weighted ETF. That was up 3.32%. So that was great, showing that not just Magnificent 7 benefited from an up market, but also then on the small cap side. So as an investor, you likely know that we prefer small caps. We overweight that, that sector. Uh, small cap stocks up very strongly last week, up 4.82%. Uh, large cap stocks were only up 2.1%. So good week for us. Things going in the right direction. In total now in the U.S., the S&P 500 year-to-date as of Friday, up 19.3%. And I mentioned the Invesco 500 equal weighted 500. On a year-to-date basis, only up 4.4%. So Again, everything has been top heavy, but now starting to broaden out. That's great. On the international side, uh, on an up week, uh, surprising a little bit that international stocks actually outperform. That hasn't happened often uh, this year. MSCI World XUS, so developed markets up 4.3. Again, S&P up 2.3. And emerging markets up 3%. So laggard in all this, again, China. China was up 1.3%. And now on a year-to-date basis, again, where the S&P 500 is up 19.3%, China stocks are down 10.9%. So last week with the inflation news uh, and expectations for future inflation, uh, fixed income was up. The two-year uh, treasury, the yield dropped 22 basis points, mean prices up. 10-year dropped 19 basis points. So the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Bond Index up last week, 1.4%, let's call it. Now, on a year-to-date basis, it's up again. So for the first eight, nine months, uh, it, that was up, and then it got hit pretty hard in October. Now it's come back. So in positive territory, again, the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Bond Index up called 0.5% year-to-date. So that's very favorable. Uh, long government bonds, as you might expect, last uh, week with a 10-year yield down 19 basis points. Long bonds did really well up. 2.2%, but still down 6.5% uh, on a year-to-date basis. So in terms of economic activity this week, we've got some data points that may or may not turn out to be impactful, but possibly the most impactful thing is the FOMC minutes that get released. So 
from uh, the last FOMC meeting where they chose not to increase interest rates. They will release the minutes of the meeting and the discussion. So what investors do is they, they tear through that to find any changes in language to suggest maybe the Fed leaning one way or another, some sort of incremental change. So we'll see what comes out of that. Don't know. Um, we'll say that the Federal Reserve and many of their regional presidents and spokespeople definitely have been striking a different tone over the last couple of weeks, suggestive of the fact that although they have been talking about rates being higher for longer, it does seem that they are moving off that and the expectations have built dramatically for interest rate cuts in early 2024. So also this week, we have existing home sales that comes up on Tuesday. Um, actually, it's supposed to be down uh, from the month before, down from September number. So the October number expected to come in at 3.9 million. Then on Wednesday, this is a shortened week with Thanksgiving on Thursday. So Wednesday, initial claims will be released. Uh, we are watching this one pretty closely because the October labor numbers, the non-farm payroll, was disappointing and the revisions were really disappointing for the prior two months. So watching the labor markets to again get an indication of the strength of the U.S. economy. So initial claims are watch back on our radar again. Uh, the week before, they were 231,000. Expectations for last week, finished on Friday, is that they'll be about the same at 227,000. Another data point that we haven't spent a lot of time on over the years, durable goods. That'll be on Wednesday. This one will really be interesting. Again, we don't watch it a lot, but people are just focused on the health of the economy, and some indicators are taking on greater prominence, significance at this time. So durable goods for the October number. Month of September, durable goods were up 4.7%. They are expected to be down 3.1% for October. And then if you strip out transportation from that, uh, month of September it was up half a percent. Now expected for the month of October to be up only 0.2%. So if uh, those do hold, again, that actually probably would be favorable. Again, investors are looking for slower but positive U.S. growth inflation coming down, and hopefully, ultimately, the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates at some point early, mid-2024. So that's it for the economic update for this week. Thank you very much for your attendance. Hope to see you next week. Thank you.